In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of doing a pretty tricky percent yield calculation. This is a problem that is also gonna require us to determine the limiting reactant. So here's the chemical equation for the reaction that we're gonna be focusing on in this problem. And what I'm gonna do is start by taking the information from the problem statement itself and just writing it underneath the balanced equation so that we have it for handy reference. The problem is telling us that we have 2.15 grams of methanol CH3OH. So I'm just gonna write that down here, 2.15 grams. And we're reacting that with 3.03 grams of oxygen gas. So we'll put that right here, 3.03 grams. And it's telling us that we are producing 3.93 grams of water, 3.93 grams. It's not giving us any information at all about CO2, and that's pretty typical. In percent yield problems, we're usually given information about all of the reactants and only one of the products. So this is the product that the problem is focusing on. And it's asking us to calculate the percent yield for this reaction. So as a reminder down here in the bottom, let's write out our percent yield calculation equation. To get the percent yield, we are going to take the actual yield, we're going to divide it by the theoretical yield, and then multiply by 100. In this problem, we have the quantities of our reactants. One of these reactants is the limiting reactant. We don't know which one is limiting. That's going to be part of the problem, figuring that out. And then we also have this 3.93 grams, and this is the actual yield for our product. Remember I told you that the actual yield is a number that is measured in the lab after you perform the experiment, or if you're solving a problem on paper, the actual yield is a number that is provided to you in the problem. The actual yield can never be calculated. It has to either be measured or a number that's given to you. The theoretical yield, on the other hand, this is a number that we do calculate using stoichiometry. We calculate the theoretical yield from the limiting reactant. So this is where it turns into a limiting reactant problem. We have to figure out which one of these two reactants is limiting. Once we determine that, we'll be able to calculate the theoretical yield. So we're going to now kind of shift gears to doing a limiting reactant problem. In a limiting reactant problem, I told you, I like to just kind of set up my own little stoichiometry problem. I'm gonna choose one of the two reactants, choose whichever one I want. I'll go ahead and choose the methanol CH3OH, and I'm gonna write myself a stoichiometry problem. And the problem that I'm gonna write goes, how much CH3OH is needed to react with, I'm just gonna say four, 3.03 grams of O2. So what I'm doing here is trying to figure out if I have this 3.03 grams of O2, how much methanol do I actually need? And once I figure that number out, I'm gonna ask myself if I actually have enough methanol, CH3OH, to react with this amount of O2. So I'm gonna be doing a stoichiometry problem now, kind of shifting gears, 3.03 grams of O2. And we're just taking this number and we are gonna be converting it to grams of CH3OH. In our first step, we go from grams of O2 into moles of O2. One mole of O2 is 32 grams. That comes from the weight of each oxygen atom. 16 plus 16 is 32. In our next step, we are going to convert from moles of O2 into moles of CH3OH. This is done using the coefficients from the balanced equation. CH3OH is 2 and O2 is 3. CH3OH is 2 and O2 is 3. And then in our last step, we are going to convert from moles of CH3OH into grams of CH3OH, and that is done with the molecular weight of CH3OH. Carbon is 12, we have three, we have four oxygen atoms, all together is four, and then 16, four hydrogen atoms, which is four, and 16 for the oxygen. So this looks like it is a molecular weight of 32 grams. 32 grams, and make sure that we have our problem set up correctly and that all of our units cancel. And so once again, what we're calculating here is how much CH3OH do we need to react with this quantity of O2? We're going to figure out if we actually have enough. So let's get our calculator out and let's do the math for this. 3.03 3 
divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times 32. So this problem looks like it's telling us that we need 2.02 grams of CH3OH. Let's get our calculator out of the way so we have more room. 2.02 grams of CH3OH are needed. Do we have enough? It looks like we do. We need 2.03 grams and we have plenty. Because we have plenty of CH3OH, we know that this is our excess reagent and this is our limiting. So now that we have that information, we know what our limiting reagent is. Our next step is to do a calculation where we determine how much product we can make, how much H2O can be made from that amount, 3.03 grams of O2. So this is really, you know, at least a two-step problem, maybe three steps if you consider this to be a step. So now that we've determined that we only need 2.02 grams of methanol and we have 2.15, which means we have plenty, we've determined that our limiting reagent is the 3.03 grams of O2, now we are ready to figure out from 3.03 grams of O2, how much water can we actually make? So initially in this problem, we're just going to be copying the same steps, the same steps, which is where we're just converting our grams of oxygen into moles of oxygen. But now in the next step, we're going to be converting moles of oxygen into moles of water, because now our goal is to figure out how much water we're making. Looking at the coefficients, we have 3O2 for every 4H2O, 3O2 for every 4H2O. In our last step, we're going to be converting the moles of water into grams of water using the molecular weight, which is 2 plus 16, a total of 18. And we will cancel out those moles of H2O. And we'll go back to the calculator one more time to figure out how much water we're making here. So now we have 3.03 divided by 32 times 4 divided by 3 times 18. And it looks like our number here is 2.27 grams of H2O. So let's get rid of the calculator again and let's see what's going on. What we have calculated here is the theoretical yield. So this is the theoretical or the maximum amount of H2O that can be made from our limiting reactant. And we're ready to plug this number in to our percent yield calculation. So our actual yield, again, we're gonna recopy that, 3.93 grams. Our theoretical yield, 2.27 grams. Multiply by 100 and we'll go back to the calculator one more time. Now, if you're looking at this, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, the actual yield was higher than the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is supposed to be the maximum that could be made, and you're right. This doesn't happen very often, but it does happen occasionally, and this is why I chose this particular example. Her percent yield is 173%. So what does this mean like in terms of, of words? This means that this, this particular reaction synthesized more than 100% of what we would expect of water. This is not a good thing from the perspective of chemistry. It isn't possible to make more than the theoretically um, calculated maximum amount. So when you have a percent yield that's greater than 100, this just simply means that somebody did something really wrong in the lab. Something is wrong in the lab. Not something wrong with our calculation. Our calculation is totally fine. 
but a very high, over 100% yield just uh, uh, reflects poorly on the person that was doing the work in the lab. I'm going to erase this because I don't want you to think that we've done any sort of incorrect calculation, but just um, know that if you do come across a, a greater than 100% yield, maybe double check your work to make sure that you didn't make any kind of mistake somewhere. If you feel confident that you've done all your work correctly, just know that it isn't impossible to calculate a greater than 100% yield.